Greetings, YouTube. This past weekend, my wife and I got an opportunity to see the movie Captain America, the first Avenger. Ironically, the last solo film before the actual film, The Avengers, will be released. Um, I don't think I really have to cover the story of Captain America. His character's been around since 1941, so, I mean, we pretty much know the story. So for me, the big issue is, have they translated the comic character, which is beloved by millions, successfully onto the big screen in an appropriate manner? One befitting its inclusion in the um, lineup that's going to be in the Avengers. Now the first thing I noticed right off the bat was the textures of the film. There was a wonderful depth to this film. It felt and looked like the 1940s. I was truly impressed. Um, if this film had been nothing to do with superhero film uh, storylines, it had just been a story about World War II, I would have completely bought if this film had been set in 1940, uh, 44 or 45. It just wonderfully done. I, I, I was I, kudos to everyone that worked on that set and uh, the lighting and the whole nine yards, the prop work. It was just wonderful. I was also really impressed with the, the way they were able to mesh in the super science that was produced by Hydra and its leader, the Red Skull. It really had a wonder, wonderful pulp feel, and it seemed to really fit that kind of tone that you need for that era of the super science that you find in comic books that, you know, is sort of nonsensical, but it's there and it has to be woven in with reality. For a film, it's not just static scenes, you know. This has to be kind of made to work in in, in a three-dimensional way, and I was really impressed by it. As was my wife; she she really enjoyed this. Um, when we were leaving the theater, I asked my wife what she thought. I always wait till we're outside to ask that question, and her comment was, "It's a damn sight better than Green Lantern." She's got that right. This film was a solid success. I would say it was equally as good as Thor. Um, Chris Evans was wonderful as um, Captain America and Steve Rogers, his more mundane counterpart. Um, some people were complaining about the digital effects that had been used to make him look thin and small. And I think they really sold it for me. It wasn't perfect. It wasn't flawless. Um, there's a lot of green screen work because they had to take so much of his body out to make it small that there'd be a gap <laughs> alongside him. So they had to do a lot of work on green screens. And like I said, it wasn't perfect. But I believed he was this small man, and then the process turned him into the full-scale Chris Evans. Um, Hugo Weaving was awesome. He just makes, he's made a career out of playing these very unusual characters and playing them flawlessly. He was the Red Skull, and I really hope they find a way of bringing back his character, because it was just so much fun. Um, Hydra was a wonderful organization. Hydra was always a little corny, in the comics to me, but this was a little more realistic as an offshoot of the Nazi party as an organization that they felt they outgrew and decided to go free agent, if you, if, if, if you will. I really enjoyed that. The supporting cast in here was excellent. His commandos were a hoot. Um, they were a lot of fun to, to, to watch, though. I think there were times when they were doing things that normal humans couldn't do. I was expecting Captain America to be able to pull some of these things off, but the fact that his commandos were right along with him really, to me, stretched the bounds of believability to the breaking point. Yes, I believe that the Cap could slide down a line and drop onto a, to a train. He's a superhuman, you know? He's the pinnacle of physical humanity in every regard. Reflexes, strength, you name it. He is it, so I could buy him doing that. The rest of the group, they're just ordinary people. They would have fallen off the top of that train and been turned into hamburger. But that's just me. Um, I also think they did an excellent job of conveying the power of Captain America. When he hits someone, they go flying, folks. And he really uses his physicality well in this film. Kick, whoosh, bang with the shield, and the guy just goes sailing. And there was no shortage of Captain America taking out the enemy. Um, this was not a PG superhero. This was a hero that was out there in war and fighting a war. He killed people. Lots of them. Um, from the mundane shooting them, 
uh, to the to the less uh, unusual, less usual, like chucking them out of planes and killing them with his shield, and even throwing a knife at one point, which is actually far harder to accomplish than you'd imagine. That's because you're really physically fit. Doesn't mean you're going to be skilled at that particular um, task. Um, but overall, I thoroughly enjoyed this. I I also enjoyed the end final scene where he wakes up in our time, and he. Uh, you know, the way he realizes right off the bat that this is not 1944 or 1945. Something's wrong. And he notices that something's not where he's supposed to be. And then, of course, Samuel L. Jackson walks in the scene and see, scene and steals everything. Um, Samuel L. Jackson just is awesome. I did have a couple of problems with this. Um, Hydra. What was their end game? Okay, you've got a big plane. They're going to drop bombs, kamikaze bombs, by the way, and blow up some major U.S. cities. Okay, they want to be go down in history as the greatest terrorists that humanity's ever known. Got it. But what's their end game? The Red Skull's got, what, 10,000 fanatic followers? You're going to take the United States with 10,000 troops? You couldn't take Yemen with 10,000 troops, I don't think. All right? We're a first world nation. At the end of World War II, we were geared for war. It was probably the worst time you could imagine of trying to invade the United States of America. I just couldn't figure out why he was doing what he was doing. He would have been much smarter to go capture some small third world country somewhere, use it as a base of operations, and then begin to gobble up neighboring countries. Yes, it's a long game, long term planning, but he might have actually achieved his goal, which was world domination. You know? I think he could have taken a, a, a lesson from uh, S.M. Sterling's Draca in that particular regard. Now, another thing I didn't quite fathom was why did the captain have to ditch himself in the North Atlantic? Okay, he's in a giant plane. It's full of bombs. He doesn't want to the bombs to make it to the United States. I get that. He's already shown he knows how to drop the bombs out of the bottom of the plane. He's done it in combat. So all he does is put it on autopilot, walk down to, down to the flight deck, boop, 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 drop the bombs into the ocean, get back into the flight deck, and just sail the plane to the United States where he just landed in a field. Yes, he is not a great pilot. You don't need to be a great pilot to land a plane in a field. Okay? But I realized why they did it, because they needed the cap to get transported to 2011, and that's how you did it. But it didn't make much sense. There's no reason for him to do that, but they did it anyway. Um, but overall, I thoroughly enjoyed the film. I recommend it if you're a comic book fan, if you're a fan of the Marvel Universe and Captain America, and I'm really looking forward to uh, the Avengers, and I'm hoping they don't do what they did with Iron Man 2, because I will be really, really disappointed. <laughs>